Hello everyone, my name is Yannick and today I'd like to show you top 10 trips or places I've done or visited around the world in my lifetime. Since many of us still can travel, you can travel uh, with me or with a finger on your map. Uh, the places are not sorted in any order, so nobody gets offended. Um, they just, as I downloaded the pictures. Hey, and if you stick around, you may even get to see your country or your city, so let's see. So let's start off with Vancouver, Canada. I met this girl in Prague on the street and she was just kind of lost. So I said, hey, why don't we go grab a beer? And we did. And we got to talk and we became friends. And then one day I was like, I really want to go somewhere. Wait, I know this girl from Vancouver. Let's give her a call. Can I visit you? And she goes, yeah, sure. So there I am with uh, Tess in Vancouver. Vancouver was amazing. Uh, I've never seen a city like this. Uh, it really touched my heart and especially because of Tessa, because she really showed me around uh, and her family was kind enough to take care of me and let me stay in their house, even though they absolutely did not know me. They did have some roots in Czech Republic or Czechoslovakia, which uh, kind of helped. I'm sure you know Canadians are friendly, uh, but this is a short story from Vancouver, what happened to me. I was parking in somebody's garage. Tess told me it's okay to park my car there. Well, it turned out it was somebody else's garage. If I would do it on my street here in Prague, somebody would probably, you know, um, scratch my car or something. Well, in this case, the lady uh, in which garage I was parking, she left me this uh, loveliest note on Hello Kitty piece of paper. So that's how kind Canadians are. Even though I was in Vancouver only for a couple of days, Tess really showed me around uh, with one of her friends who was a sailor, so she took me sailing. And she has a brother, David. Hey David, if you're watching, I still follow him on Instagram, he's great. And guess what? He's a pilot. Uh, so he took me flying out uh, over Vancouver and that was one of the most amazing things I've ever done in this tiny little homemade plane. I'm so scared of flying, you have no idea, but flying over the mountains uh, next to the city was something I will never ever uh, forget. So uh, that was Vancouver. Now let's go to the Balkans. Uh, I love to do road trips and I actually bought a Miata uh, Mazda MX-5 for my dad as a birthday gift, but he never uses it. So I do a lot of road trips in the car and two years ago I did one to uh, the Balkans. Uh, you know, I was this lonely guy. I camped out in Croatia, which was horrible, horrible, horrible. But driving on roads in Croatia and along the sea in a car like this was a lot of fun. So uh, road trips, we'll, we'll get to more road trips I did, are something that really drives me forward. Uh, this is some camp in uh, Montenegro. Um, I kind of like Montenegro, the fact that they use euros and the prices are much lower. So you're used to seeing, you know, a dinner for 10 euros and suddenly it's four here or a beer with a euro on this beach. When you're, when you travel alone, you just take pictures of your car and of your shadows. <laughs> this is Albania. This road I found by accident and it is the most beautiful road I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I was driving alone along the, the turns. I was really enjoying it. And then at the end in Albania, there was a sign built from money from the EU. <laughs> and I eventually slept in this um, beautiful um, bed and breakfast place in the Albanian Alps. I believe it was like 20 euros or maybe even less for my stay, including breakfast. Random picture from Macedonia. When you, when you drive in a car, you get to discover a lot. You just take a turn wherever you wanna go. You just um, go to any village you wanna go. So this is the capital of Macedonia. Back then it was Macedonia, now it's North Macedonia, or it was named even different. I'm sorry to all you Macedonians uh, if I get this wrong. Uh, please be patient with me. Uh, yeah, and they have double-deckers. I, I don't believe I looked it up why, but they do it. Uh, I met some friends there because since I started doing the Honest Guide show, I somehow gained popularity online. So if I tweet that I'm somewhere or I put something on Instagram, people write me back, hey, do you want to visit? Uh, so I did visit this guy and boy, did we get drunk. Uh, they're, they're a Czech family living in Macedonia. I also met this dude. He was Polish. I forgot his name. He was a hitchhiker and I stopped. It was a border between, I think, somewhere down south. And he said, hey, you're the honest guide. And I was like, how the hell do you know me? And he was like, oh, I was in Prague a couple years ago, so I watched your videos. So I always try to take hitchhikers when I uh, cruise along. Once again, a picture of the car on a beach in Greece. 
Um, I remember tweeting out to some of our some of my followers, most likely you, if it's legal to sleep on the beach in Greece, and everyone said no. Uh, but then there was some honest guy who said, oh sure, you'll be fine. So I did sleep on the beach. I did a little picnic and it was amazing. In the morning, I met this dude uh, who was a fisherman. He showed up at uh, 6 a.m. and I had some stomach issues uh, back from Albania. So I really needed him to let me use the bathroom. And he looked at me and he said, well, if you say uh, thank you, uh, I will let you use the bathroom. I said, I have no idea how to say thank you in Greek. I really need to use the bathroom. And so he taught me how to say Evcharisto. So since then I know how to say Evcharisto. So it's important to use the bathroom. Um, he was also asking me what's my religion. Uh, so he was asking if I'm Catholic or Orthodox. I said neither. And I was drawing him a Jewish star uh, into the sand. He just couldn't, his mind couldn't come across the fact that somebody cannot be Catholic or Orthodox. So that was pretty funny. Up next, uh, road tripping USA. I did my very first road trip across the country in 2009. Uh, I was lucky enough that my friend Bob, who's sort of my stepdad, I guess, uh, lent me his huge Chevy Suburban, which if you're if you don't know what that is, that's that's a bus, basically. Um, so I drove that car around. I was enjoying the American lifestyle. I was quite young, didn't have that much money. So I really had to calculate uh, gas money and food money. But you know, me being a European, I know how to park big cars in small spaces. Uh, so this is uh, the Suburban parked on a park and ride in Chicago. I really squeezed it in there. Probably not legal, but who cares? Discovering Chicago, once again, if you're on a road trip, uh, you can take turns wherever you want. And that's pretty much what happened next uh, I was with uh, my girlfriend back then and I said, here's a map. We can pinpoint any place we want to see on the map. We have, you know, a month of traveling. And she said, I want to see the presidents in the, in the, um, um, in the rock. And I said, you mean Mount Rushmore? She goes, yeah. I said, that's really far. That's like a thousand mile detour. She's like, well, you, you told me to say whatever I want. So I said, all right, let's go see the Mount Rushmore. Uh, so we actually did. And I don't know any American from my circle that would actually see the Mount Rushmore. Uh, so I'm one of the few. Uh, we've discovered the beautiful state of Wyoming uh, and many other places. This is so back uh, in time that most of my memories are with the photos. But one of the strongest memories, and I don't have pictures from that, is visiting the town of Lusk, L-U-S-K, uh, where I sat down, everybody was smoking, everybody was wearing um, cowboy hats. I looked like a total tourist and uh, they just couldn't understand why am I there in the local pub and I said do you have good burgers and the guy turned around there was a sign saying we have the best burgers in the state so I'm like well, you got me with that uh, so that was uh, exciting everything's big in US especially the pollution they create with the big cars they drive around on road trips huh eventually we made it to the other side of the ocean my goal was to take a swim in the same bathing suit on the East Coast, eventually on the West Coast, which is what I did. Uh, so here's me standing by some bridge. Forgot the name of it. Most of the times we slept in the car, which uh, quite often was difficult and challenging, especially in San Francisco. We actually slept under Golden Gate Bridge, uh, but we got woken up by the police and they said, you cannot sleep here, get out of here. This was like 2 a.m. So what were we gonna do, you know? I was looking for a parking spot, eventually I found this one. As a thank you to my friend Bob, who lent me the car, I printed out all these pictures of his car at different locations around uh, states. And when I got them developed at Walmart, the guy was going through the pictures and said, can I ask you, do you like work for Chevrolet? Like, is this your job to drive cars around US and take pictures of them? <laughs> I was like, no. We even took a detour to a place called Prague in Texas. Uh, so in Texas, there's a village called Prague and I really wanted to visit it. Um, Every single street, place was named after some Czechs. So this is uh, Felix Hayek Garage. Uh, we went through the cemetery where there were a lot of Czech names. Uh, and we even visited a place where they claimed to have Czech collages. Uh, when I asked about it, they said, oh, we think it's a Dutch thing. So uh, they weren't a big fans. This is my friend from Florida. He's a brother of the guy who lent me the car. This person is important because he introduced me to Waffle House and I love Waffle House. So uh, hello to everyone in the Redneck Riviera. Absolutely adore Waffle House. I wish they'd be here in Europe. 
and uh, we usually go to what's the what's the all you can eat uh, place island crab island island crab something like that since I try to go visit my family every year uh, I do go to New York every year here's my favorite pub in New York City it's called Jimmy's Corner did more road tripping with a newer car a couple years ago two years ago then three years ago last year and uh, that's my friend Bob that I talked about uh, we're just fixing the car something broke uh, he bought a new Tahoe not a new but it's like you know newer and it totally looks like a cop car so if you ever see me in US driving this, you will be slowing down. Whenever I go on the freeway, everybody's slowing down because they think I'm a cop. It has like lights on top and everything. Up next, Romania, uh, especially the location of the villages of Banat. Uh, those are Czech villages. We made an episode about it. I also wrote a blog, honest.blog. Yes, we have the coolest address, I know. And um, I discovered it by filming a series, TV series about it. I used mostly, most of my time I worked as a camera guy and a show creator. So that's me filming uh, in Banat. Uh, this is one of my best friends, Martin. So we're uh, drinking the local beverages there. The idea of Banat is that you always stay with locals. You try to support them by leaving some money there. Uh, they show you around, they cook for you, they let you stay in their homes uh, and you drink a lot. So we were with the show trying to introduce basically how they live. The time almost like stopped there, you know, a century ago. So they have farms, they have cattle, they have uh, uh, fields. Uh, they're self-sustained or how would you say it? Um, self, in, they're independent or pretty much on pretty much anything. That's me on one of the favorite places I have in Banat, a village of Rovensko. They have these uh, fences that I really like. They're very Instagram friendly, I'd say. Once you go to Banat, you always come back, always. So the first coming back was uh, with a group of my friends. Uh, these are my friends. <laughs> and so I've introduced them to the villages and they absolutely loved it. I even took a train once to Banat. There's this music festival and the guys who organized it organized this long haul train, which was the longest train from Czech Republic ever. Uh, it was horrible, but fun at the same time. I did it only once, we'll never do it again. On the next trips, I also took my little Miata or my dad's Miata there. Uh, so that was fun to drive this little bugger on the roads of Romania uh, because they are not that perfect. And last year again, I went to Banat. So this is one of the places I return to every year. And uh, I once again introduced it to more of my friends. This is Honza, my buddy. Everybody in Czech Republic is named Honza, by the way. And uh, we stayed with the locals. He absolutely loved it. He fell in love with Banat and now he's going there nonstop. So uh, here's my friend Honza and also my friend Honza and also my friend Honza. Yep, everyone is Honza. Last year I drove instead of my Miata, my beautiful Volvo. Uh, I'll get back to the car uh, once again. Iran. How did we get to Iran and whose idea was it? Well, obviously it was Hansa's idea. He called me up and he said, hey, I'm buying these tickets for 3000 crowns, 120 euros. I'm like, wow, to where? Like it's more expensive than to go to you know, Paris, but it's less expensive than to go to US. Like what's the destination? He said, Iran, do you want to go with me? And I said, sure. So I just, um, uh, he sent me the link. We bought the tickets and we went with a group of friends with Honza uh, that you've already seen in one of the pictures and Kove and the trip was absolutely amazing 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 why was it amazing not for the country really the country is amazing but for the people the people were so friendly and so kind you cannot imagine we were approached by people trying to help us all the time. But since we're used to the you know, European thing, like, oh, don't bother me, don't try to help me, you're trying to scam me, blah, blah, blah. And eventually we just sort of gave up and we started to listen to the people and we said, yeah, sure, um, how can you help me? Can you, can you tell me where this is and that is? Uh, the kindness of the people was just beyond belief. We wanted to rent a car, but we couldn't. So we uh, eventually ended up riding the buses this is what buses look like Iran. Um, all of them are VIP, they claim it. Uh, they all have these luxurious business seats. Uh, they all give you food along the way. So we managed to visit a lot of cities uh, and it was absolutely uh, amazing. 
And as you can see, most of the pictures I'm showing you are with uh, people, with locals, because that's what we wanted to experience. We wanted to talk to them. We wanted to get to know them because that's how you get to know a country is through the people, not through landmarks, not through mountains, uh, through the people. And um, yeah, so they were absolutely amazing. That's how long my beard was in Iran. Eventually I shaved my beard in Iran. Uh, so when I said people are amazing, the country itself uh, also is. Uh, so if you can visit, uh, definitely do it. Here comes the part when I said, don't get offended by the countries I show. Next up, Israel. Uh, why did I go to Israel in the first place? Well, I'm actually Jewish, not really, sort of, because my grandfather was Jewish, which makes my mom not Jewish, but I have the right of, to return. Um, so I went on a trip called Birthright, Taglet, and uh, basically they showed me around the country. They really want you to come in, to move in. Uh, so that was the first time I've been to Israel in 2006. I did fall in love with the country, so I returned multiple times. Uh, Tel Aviv is a great place. Uh, absolutely love the beaches. Uh, people are great. Uh, it is expensive, very, very expensive for our standards. So to grab a beer or to go to a restaurant is pricey. So I usually just eat pita and hummus uh, and try to buy some, you know, gold star and bottles and just chill on the beach. I always try to rent a car, drive around, discover Negev, uh, go to Eilat, go up to the um, uh, Golan Heights uh, and so on. Always try to get to Jerusalem as well. Uh, so it really is a place where I return a lot. I guess I was praying with this guy. He asked me if I'm Jewish. I said, nah, not really. And he goes, what do you mean not really? You either are or you're not. Well, let's go pray. I'm like, All right. I was in Israel once with a film crew. We were filming about a reality show that we were creating. It was like a military camp sort of. And uh, actually war broke just by the time we got uh, to the airport. And so rockets were flying from Gaza. You can see Gaza on this picture in, way in the back. Uh, so we always had our phones beeping and people taking cover and the Iron Dome would shoot down the, the rockets. Um, I'm sure there will, this may start a discussion under this video. Please don't do it. Uh, I don't want to get into this. When you talk to people, they're normal. People don't start wars. Governments start wars. Uh, people don't hate each other. Uh, haters hate each other. So. Uh, I have respect to all the people uh, anywhere in the world and I absolutely uh, love this part of the world and I wish um, once uh, it will all be peaceful. Oh, you're gonna kill me in the comments. Eventually I took Hansa there as well. We had a lovely weekend. We found really cheap uh, tickets. We also unfortunately found a pub that was all you can drink for like 20 euros. Uh, so the trip ended up with me being hurt, uh, but I survived. I took another Honza there as well. That's my father. Uh, we did also a longer weekend. We rented a car and with his wife, uh, I showed him around. So we had a lot of fun. He really enjoyed it. Uh, he was drinking a lot. This was also the first time, this is back in 2017, when I was approached by a fan abroad, which never happened to me. I mean, I've, I've been approached by people in Prague that they know me, but if you're on the streets of Tel Aviv and somebody comes up to you and goes, Hey, you're Yannick, I know your show uh, is just pff, crazy. Uh, latest trip I took to Israel is with my friend Martin. We flew to Eilat. There was this old military airport uh, that it was just a runway where they build a bunch of tents and start calling it an airport. Uh, so the tickets were extremely cheap. We flew with Ryanair. They stayed for a week. I stayed for a weekend. Uh, so yeah, if you ever have a chance to visit Eilat, go ahead. Uh, we took a ride on a taxi and this woman said, you're from Czech Republic? We're gonna be going there in November. And we said, cool. And she goes, do you think there'll be snow? We're like, maybe, I don't know. What about rain? I'm like, rain? Yeah, it will rain for sure. She's like, wow, I'm so much looking forward to rain. And then we realized that it never rains in Eilat. So I guess she was pretty excited. Just the way we're excited when we go to Eilat and it's sunny all day long. I was wondering, if there's anybody from Israel watching, do you have weather forecast for a lot? Like on TV, will somebody come up and be like, it will be same weather tomorrow as it was yesterday and as is today for the next months, year, two years, three years. Like it's always 40 degrees. It will go lower in the winter, like by 10 degrees, but then it's just back to hot. Do you have that? I'm curious. Next up, Scotland. 
Uh, as I've mentioned, I like to do road trips. Uh, this time I went on a road trip from Prague to London and then driving up to Edinburgh. This is in Edinburgh. Uh, and eventually we went even further up north. Um, that's the only country in Europe where I can actually talk to people because they speak English. So that's it. It's hard to do jokes without Hansik behind the camera. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the list of 10 of my favorite places in the world. And But please don't take it too seriously. I'm curious to hear your top 10 places or countries uh, in the comments below. And I'm also curious what you think about what I said about your country. And maybe I didn't say much, uh, but I didn't want this video to be too long. All right, so I'm going to finish. Thank you so much. Bye bye. And now I'm going to go to my studio to edit this video, which is in Razl. Great. I'm also going to meet a fan there because he ordered our book, didn't receive. He wanted a refund because he bought a new one in Prague. So I'm going to go buy him a bunch of beers.